Welcome to another episode of Sawdust Nation Podcast with your host, Nick from MPG Creations, Nat from Nap Snotty Works LLC, and myself, hey. Josh from North Country Woodworking. We have one hell of an episode for you, so strap in and listen up, because Nick's going to start off with sponsors. We would never been able to do this without the help of Daniel from PWNCNC. So do us all a favor. Head on over to PWNCNC.com. And check out all the goodies he's got on that website for your CNC. Um, for ten percent off, or excuse me, for five percent off your order, go ahead and use promo code Sawdust Nation nine eight one. And once again, we would love to thank Total Boat for their continued support. If you need a promo code for that Total Boat uh, Total Boat checkout experience, hit us up in the DMs, and we'll give you a ten percent off promo code. But uh, other than that. Um, it's been a it's been a long it feels like it's been a long week since the last time we were on on the air here. But uh what's what's been going on Let's in your see. shop, guys? Well, I got in the shop, started doing a whole bunch of making. I got a whole bunch of projects started. Um try to complete a couple. That's what you do. Yeah, you know, I try to. Uh, don't always work that way though. I got two key projects done. Um one for a uh actually a chief that does not reside on this base. Um she travels kind of like everywhere. So she stopped by. She picked up uh, the key for a uh, key spouse. And then I did a Valentine's Day key for uh, another chief. And, uh, yeah, he, he really enjoyed that. So he got his uh, present for his Valentine's Day through me, which is kind of cool. To think about it. Um, and then um, the dog topper I'm almost done with, um, hopefully for a pickup later this week. Um the frame that I'm doing, I was going to paint it this weekend, but once you know it, we had a beautiful 60 degree day and the next day it snowed. So <laughs> I didn't get to paint it and uh, the last couple of days have been quite busy. So I'll hopefully get out there and get that painted white, call it a day and get that out as well. I got an order for three more mounts. Um, uh, the listing on Etsy is working really well. The 174th here on base, they'll go on there, order the mallets, give me the info, drop out the uh, coins. Um, in fact, I ran out of walnut for the first time since, uh, yeah, <laughs> Neff's look tells it all. Um, so the walnut I've been using is actually a buy that I bought quite a while ago. I bought a whole bunch of walnut. Uh, they were meant to be steps, and they were solid walnut, and I cut them down and been using them for these mallets this entire time. And... I have two more blanks left. So I went out and I got a hold of New Jersey Wood Forever. Mike down there hooked me up with two beams, um, about five and a half by five and a half. Well, anywhere, uh, they were like between 11 and 13 feet between the two beams. So I have more blanks already drying and getting ready for some more mallets. The one thing I am running into is these beams are a little bit wet. So um, I'm looking for a way to cure them faster, right? Because we don't want to give away wet wood. We want it a little bit dry. And uh, <laughs> what do you do? You take a moisture meter. I do meter have a to moisture it? meter. Yes. Um, so Mike does have a kiln down there, but at the moment it's pretty full, and he couldn't really throw those in there. So um, there's a couple different options. Okay, so I did some research, and you could build your own kiln, a very small one that gives. Uh, talking to the guy that built it, he was getting 10% out uh, at 24 hours, which is quite a bit. So, and he did it with a music box and a, a small space heater. And uh, there's that way. Um, I've talked to some turners to put stuff in the oven and they bake it low and slow for a length of time. Um, so I think I'm going to go that road just because like it's the easiest and the most accessible to me right at the moment. And I'm going to do a couple as a test and see how it goes. I'm sure there's other ways to go about doing this. Obviously, time is your best friend doing it that way. I like to have a couple ready to go because I never know quite when I'm going to get these orders. And as it was, I was supposed to get one, maybe two, and they purchased three. So that just goes to show you, you know, how things roll. But um Nap, what are you yeah. doing over there, man? <laughs> He's rubbing his wood. 
Sorry, I thought I was muted. My B. Anywho, um, yeah, so things are going well in the shop. I, I cleaned up a little bit, uh, organized my wood, and uh, at the shop, it was just getting too bad. I couldn't really work in there. I got rid of a whole bunch of scraps, which is always a tough thing to do for me because as I'm pulling things out, I'm like, I could do this with it. I could do that with it. But when it comes down with some of these scraps, I've had it in there for like a year and a half. So I obviously am not going to do anything with them. So I, I got a fire going. Um, if anyone that's listening out there, Lowe's is having a great sale. They have clearance on uh, fire pits for $18. So you can go run out and grab one of those. And that's what I did. And uh, I've been using that basically almost every day trying to burn up with some of that wood, which is, you know, it's been cold here. So it's been nice having a little fire out there when I'm working. Um, yeah, a uh, lot, lot of other big things happening, uh, but I'm going to wait till a little bit later into the episode to kind of go through some of those big things. And uh, I'm going to toss this over to uh, Nap because he looks like he's raring to go. I don't know if I was raring to go, but I was definitely scraping my wood pretty hard over here. Yeah, um, we can hear it. <laughs> yeah, my bad to our, uh, our listeners on that. Um, so everything's going on in the shop. It's, it's kind of weird. Like I'm starting to come into this lull. Uh, where I'm literally completing that 12 plaque project I've been talking about for like weeks now. They've been on the uh, the old IG. You've seen what they look like. You've seen the process. Uh, and what I was doing while Josh was talking and I was listening intently um, was getting rid of any extra like dribbles of epoxy that might be on the front. Just because, you know, yeah, you could probably get away with it. But I don't like having like if you see it at the right light, you see the the imperfections. Uh, once I'm done, I'm going to buff in a little bit of Odie's, I think, too, just to give it a little more shine uh, than what's already on there. But those are being finished tonight. I've already etched all of the plates for those. Uh, I finally dialed in t- uh, to a setting to where I barely have to wipe anything away, which is pretty awesome. Um, that hat, the hat stand that I've been trying to finish for like weeks now uh, because I was trying to do the old sublimation uh, press, I finally came out. I did not use laminate because uh, I could not figure that out very well. I, I kept melting the laminate other than just like melting it just enough to stick. I literally cooked it. It was it was crispy and I had to uh, scrap that one. So I ended up actually just sublimating straight to uh, the ring or the plywood itself. And it actually turned out really good. Put a few coats of polyacrylic on there. The, the color popped through a little more. Uh, it's The customer likes it. Let's just put it that way. Uh, So it's actually out in the garage drying right now because I went ahead and sanded through some more um, finish on it. So once we're done with the podcast, I'm going to go finish it. So those two projects will finish off anything that I've had in the books um, for for this week. Uh, I do have a coin rack flag to make, but that's not going to take me about a couple days. Uh, Just a typical cherry painted uh, black uh, painted cherry carved out with the racks and the rails and stuff. Uh, just so they have space for a few coins. It's a small coin rack, nothing crazy. And then I've had a couple odd requests. So we got some people going away. We've got some people with some interesting hobbies at work. Uh, dude has uh, has really taken a liking to cooking. And he's got a really lot of, a lot of really nice knives. And those knives uh, come with these like scabbards or he called it something else. I forget what he calls it. But anyways, it, the knife goes in it, so it doesn't go in a block. It doesn't go in like a little wrap. It goes in its own special little case. And he said they sent him a poplar one, or he didn't know what the wood was. I looked at it. I was like, well, this is poplar. Clearly, this is poplar. And they didn't finish it. They didn't put no oil, no no like wet wood, uh, food wet, anything like that, nothing. So I was like, dude, do you want me to laser engrave this with something and then finish it with like Odie's or something? He's like, what's Odie's? And I was like, well, let me tell you what Odie's is like. He's like... What's Odie's? <laughs> You're going to learn today, son. Oh, he's going to like it because I'm going to actually laser engrave that tonight. I've already got the file pulled up right here with, and he wants food dash E, little creativity there, uh, foodie. And then we're going to go ahead and laser etch that just on the bottom portion on the, on the flat, flat edge of the knife sheath. And then uh, I'll slather it in Odie's or buff it in rather with uh, one of those Orca abrasive pads and then uh, give it to him tomorrow. Uh, let's see what else. And then the other obscure job. So I won't say who it's for, but we got a deer mode phone, like old, like office phone. And I have to laser grave stuff on this phone. Now it's never to be used again. Like it's like just a prop at this point. And 
it's going to have like an engraving on the handle and on the underside of the handle, it's going to have like a secret saying on there that it's going to have like all of our gamer, we're a bunch of nerds together. So it's going to have our gamer tags where like the buttons would be for like the switch, you know? So like you push a button, you call this person, push a button, you call this person. So I'm doing that on a phone. I don't know how that's going to turn out. I'm still very curious on how this is going to work. I might do a little extra, like put a little bit of like a wood insert in it so it looks better. And it doesn't just look like a bunch of burnt plastic. So we'll see. Um, so there's that. I got a laser at some glass. Uh, they got a, a decanter set that they want me to go ahead and laser engrave like his name and stuff on it. So I got those things happening. And is there really anything else though? No. I mean, I got shadow boxes and stuff, but those aren't until April. And I'll wait to talk about those when we get there. Uh, I might even start those at the end of this month. I don't know yet. I'm just waiting to see because as soon as I start on the stuff that's like later down the road, it seems like, oh, hey, by the way, Nap, can you do this? Cool. Right when I want to get ahead. Thanks. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's really all I got going on in the shop. I mean, I got some other things, but like you said, Josh, save some of this stuff for later. Uh, leaving, you know, just, just the, what we've been doing so far uh, as far as projects are concerned. So, Nick, what you got going on, man? Um. Well, I stopped by Woodcraft yesterday. Ooh. Pretty interesting. I picked up some supplies for just like glue and stuff like that. But I also picked up a couple of uh, prizes for our 100th episode giveaway sponsored by Woodcraft, the the, the giveaway. So uh, I think we already talked about the number four hand plane. I don't know if you guys can see. But it sure is a beauty. It's a. I'm not taking it out of the bag because it's got oil all over it. Um, mm, oil to keep the mm. to keep the steel nice and fresh. Um, I have the boxes for them too, but I just wanted to show the camera. I also have a uh, medium shoulder plane, a Wood River shoulder plane that Woodcraft Texas has generously donated for our 100th episode giveaway. So. Um, shameless plug but stay tuned for that right but uh otherwise um i've just been jobbing it been uh working on a couple of different plaques and i I finished a bumper plate like you know how i do the normal weight plates i make them out of hdu well i made a bumper plate out of hdu it's like twice as thick but it doesn't bounce like regular bumper plate would (laughs) He it's, did a good uh, job on it. I see. I saw it in person. It it looks pretty freaking cool, man. You thanks. Did a good job on that. I'm. Uh, I just clear coated it tonight, so it'll be out in the mail here this weekend. And then, um, I f- I finished a metal badge out of um, it's like laserable aluminum, which is really cool stuff. It just adheres to acrylic, and you can laser. Not I don't want to say etch, but you can cut right through it and make it whatever shape you want so why not do a a badge and uh i have the electrician coming this week because that big old joiner that i got um it doesn't run on no electricity i need a 220 plug for it so um i'll have that installed this week other than that though like oh i you know i made a flag a while ago and i kept it because i thought it was like i i really liked it so i was like i'm gonna keep it and I I put it on my office wall at work, and it's been sitting there for a couple months. And uh, you know, whatever. And then one one uh, day last week, my my buddy was like, "Hey, I'm coming to town for a class, and I need a pro- like we need to like essentially make a legacy project. Can mm-hmm. do, can you make something, and you know, we'll pay you." And I was like, "Well, I, I can't. I don't. I'm busy. I don't have enough." time I'm, I'm backed up on orders right now so but i do have this flag if you guys want it and uh i i finally got what i wanted for it so i i sold it i did a little modification to it because they wanted some graphics on it and stuff like that but other than that i mean yeah all good all good but uh let's see here i'm still working on that trunk build i have hopefully i hit that out this weekend that's I'm I'm waiting on the the items from the member to arrive so I can start building the boxes the shadow boxes inside of it because without those items it's just an empty box. You Here's know a question what I mean? for you uh, for your guys' shadow boxes and whatnot. How how do you price out a shadow box not knowing exactly what's going to go into it? 
Well, I I typically build the box, um, whatever size they give me, parameters they give me, um, and then if they can't fit what anything in it, other than what fits, so that's you know. Here's the, here's the scenario. Um, they don't give you a size. They're like, hey, I want to put this stuff in it. We can't give you this stuff right away, but we need you to build the box. How would you go about doing that with a lack of information? I would. Well, I would probably try to estimate as much as I could how big it minimum and then add a little bit of space. You know what I mean? As far as size goes, but I've been there. I've been there. Nap's been there. I'm yeah. sure. It's bad when they say, Hey, can you make me shadow box? And typically what you hear metals, you've got badges. Sometimes you have, l- listen, I'm speaking loud enough. You just have baby ears. Um, <laughs> listen louder. You, <laughs> um, no, but seriously. So I, I typically know there's good ribbons, sometimes metals, maybe coins. Um, I try not to advertise coins because coins are a BI to, you know, mount in shadow boxes at times. Um, and then if they want a plate, they want a beret because security forces are the two that I've actually made them for. And that takes up a chunk of space in its own. So typically I, I give them an estimate. I say, hey, this is what it's roughly going to cost. But depending on what you want to put in it, the price can change. I Yeah, I don't really like to change my price in the middle of a build. But I, I do give them that disclaimer. I'm like, look, um, you know, I need your stuff as soon as possible. So, and 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 that that takes all the pressure off of me because I have to wait until I get the stuff. Typically, like for this box, I'm gonna have to wait till I get the stuff to even work on the lid. It's a lid shadow box, so the lid's Ooh. gonna be made. And I have to put it all in the lid and then I have a tray to put it. I have plenty of real estate. Okay. But in order for me to finish the box, I need to have their stuff. And that's, that's the, that's the biggest problem, you know, and then plus shipping. Now it's, it gets complicated quick. It gets real complicated and people don't understand that. And I got, so I tell them, I'm like, you get a five by uh, three by five flag with your shadow box. It comes with it. Yeah. Like that's, I priced that into there for them. And then they tell me, um, like late, uh, late in the game, I already purchased the flag, which whatever I can save it for the next one, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, they tell me two days ago, uh, no, we want, we want a funeral size flag in, in the, this box. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Where am I getting this? Are you sending it to me? And they're like, yeah, well, UPS it to you. I'm like, okay, well, that's great. But that, so that just pushes me back another day, <laughs> you know? Like I can't start. I guess I can start. I have a funeral size flag for this kind of situation, but I can't put the glass in because once it's in there, it's never coming out. This is one of the things where it's like it's in there, it's in there, and I super glue everything down, um, minus the flag. Obviously, it sits in its own flag box. But once the super glue is set, that's it. Now that is one it. last uh, question to throw at you guys because. Uh, honestly, I've built what two shadow boxes, and both I got the materials before I even started. I was going to start uh, build without the materials to price it out and whatnot. Uh, that's just how I went about it because I was unsure of the process for myself. Um, but would you ever build a shadow box where they could access it and actually put more in there, or you know, that maybe require more room later on, uh, so that you could open it? you know, change things up or whatnot. I do. Typically you can access all of my boxes. Typically you can access from the rear. That's what I was kicking around by the way, Josh, this shadow box for the, uh, I'm, I'm worried about mm-hmm. weight for the mm-hmm. lid. So if I build a shadow box to throw inside of a already solid walnut lid, that lid's going to weigh yeah. a ton. I, I, I've been kicking around the idea of make because you can't you can't just like chop off one of the sides of the lid and then slide glass in and then make it removable. You know, it would it it would just be too. I don't know. You'd have to over engineer the living daylights out of it. Um. So a I either make everything in the lid unaccessible and everything in the tray can be accessible maybe from the back mm-hmm. from the bottom side, or b. It's just, you know, it is what it is. You know what I mean? This is it. <laughs> so, but once you glue stuff down to the, to the, uh, to the felt or even yeah. say you inlay coins, 
that's it, man. You're not, it's game over on that part. You're not going to be able to pull those off. I mean, you probably can with an angle grinder. <laughs> <laughs> Makes absolute sense. But, you know, like when it comes to shadow boxes, the, it's the very limited experience I have, it feels like they always come up with something more as you go along. Oh, yeah. That's, that's they the always name want of the game. More. They want to throw in everything and everything. And I understand this is, you know, this is a, you know, look back at their career. They want as much as they can get in there. But uh, in both cases, for me personally, I had to put like a hold to it. Like I, I was like, look, you could have this or you can have that. And, you know, they were very understanding in that fact. But I mean, like I, I definitely had to approach it as like you wanted this. This is what I planned for. You changed this. And because of this change, now we're dealing with these restrictions. So typically though if you before you start a build if it's like you you took the order and you're waiting to build yeah or you just you haven't started yet that's easy easy like redirection you know what i mean like you can shift yeah, fire obviously. and go in a different direction with how you're going to do it but like I'll, I'll give you some perspective here uh this box is going to be presented on the 25th of this month yeah okay i have i have less than five days to get it buttoned up and ready to go i don't have any of the stuff yet so if i don't get any of that stuff they know that if i don't get any of that stuff that was mailed to me in that time period i cannot guarantee delivery uh for the date of the ceremony there's no way yeah that it's like, makes sense and you're looking at you're also looking at this uh and i don't think they were tracking this either but monday is a holiday do you think ups is working monday probably not or if they are, it's probably some like warehouses and stuff like that. So even if I get the stuff mailed off this weekend, it, Monday's a dead day, and it's got to be in New Jersey by Friday. So I don't know, hey, man. Nick, so for the for the the uh, what you call it, the weight of your lid, have you considered? Now I don't know how well versed you are in mortises, but you can uh, do a mortise um, strut. Where you literally put a mortise on either side, and the strut actually folds into the mortise, and they're really, really strong. Maybe something to look at. I don't know how a mortise I'll, strut. I'll look it up and send it to you. But it literally, you make a mortise in the sides of the the lid, and what happens is, is it attaches on the inside, and when you fold it down, the struts fall inside the mortise. So that way, there's no um, nothing on the inside of the box, but rather it's in the sides of the box, and it's a lot stronger than let's say the struts I use. I mean, the ones I use are strong, but that'll hold a lot more weight. What well, are you talking about to hold the lid up? Yeah, because you said no. I, I, be yeah, no. I'm talking about just in general because you're talking about building a shadow box inside of a box, essentially, and it's it's not a small box. It's the dimensions are two foot by three foot, so length by width. You know what I mean? So it's okay. It's a pretty big box. I I'm going to use these things. I, I ordered hardware. For, from I believe it was Kennedy Hardware. The last time I for, failed to mention KennedyHardware.com, but they uh, they have really nice hardware, and I have the ones that when you open the lid, they lock into place so the lid will stay up at a ninety degree angle. Yeah, if sense. that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I just but, you, that out. but at the same time, so at the same time though, you have to account for those for those folding arms, or else mm -hmm. your lid's not going to shut all the way, and you're going to damage the the glass or whatever on the on the lid. So my shadow box is going to be recessed a little bit into the lid. So it, it'll it have, you know, sufficient room. It was either that or, or bring like notch out an area for them, but I don't like the notch idea. How many, how many boxes have you done now, Josh? I know you, you started doing them a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks yeah, ago. You did I, that like one. I said, I haven't done that many. I've done two that have been delivered. Um, and the first one obviously was, absolutely a learning curve you know what i'm saying it was a, i was overly stressed over it you guys came to my aid on that one i appreciate the help um the second one wasn't that difficult because it was essentially a box um and a lot of lessons learned from the first um but i've been sealing my boxes completely like you would have to absolutely pry up the back to get at the stuff inside um everything inside is absolutely uh not nailed down, but it's it's not going anywhere. I make sure that's good to go. I do a shake test, everything, all the dust is out, and then I seal it completely with a bead of glue around the edge of the panel. But uh, you could get it out if you really wanted to. 
um, but it's not going to be easy. And that's one of the questions I wanted to bring to the podcast today was because um, there's obviously plenty of ways to go about doing that. You know what I'm saying? You can have a panel that slides in and out. You could have, you know, you could even do a lock if you really wanted to, if you want to go that far. But uh, that's the way I was finding that way. No dust or anything would get into the box and settle in there. Um, and these two individuals were retiring. They were not going to get any more achievements or anything crazy. So I was pretty confident in doing that. I even asked the clients if they were good with that, and they said it was fine. Um, that's why I brought that question up today. And this, the first question I brought up about, you know, how do you size and price out the box, you know, without necessarily the materials is because that's something I'm still kind of struggling on. You know what I'm saying? Um, when they say here is a picture of the materials, I know the general sizes of everything, but I like to have those materials so I can put them on a board and then measure things out as I go. But, you know, just from doing this, you know, job for as long as we have, that's never going to be the case. They're not going to be living down the street. It might be someone wanting something done. They take a picture of it and that's as good as I'm going to get until the next case right up to the deadline. Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of curious in how you guys are handling that because, you know, I'm sure if I'm wondering that question, there has to be someone out there doing the same. So I will tell you this, Josh, you don't necessarily have to seal it with glue. Um, if you do enough pilot, like, so I do pilot holes first, so I don't, you know, crack the plywood or mm -hmm. back or anything like that. And True. I don't crack the, the edge. Yeah. Um, but realistically I do my corners and then I do middle screws between those corners and that thing ain't going nowhere first and foremost. And if you use a French cleat, uh, I mean, all they do is unscrew it and pull it off. Uh, but the second portion of that is, is because of the dado or the rabbit you put in there for that mm -hmm. plywood to sit on, it's going to be very hard for dust to get in there. I know you, I see your concern. Yeah. But and I, I think say, it's a lack of experience of a concern. It was one of those things where when you're building something for the first time, you think of all the worst case scenarios. So you over engineer. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely I've seen a shadow box of someone else's work recently and how they closed it up the back. And I think I'm going to go down that path um, just because I like that way. Because if say that, you know, and these last two builds didn't go the way they went where I, you know, I delivered it. It was fine. What happens on the way something gets messed up. Now I'm in a, I'm a little bit of trouble. I got to, you know, cut that glue and remove that panel. So, uh, yeah, I just was curious on your guys' thoughts and basically, you know, <laughs> what have you been doing? Cause you've guys, I don't know, not, you've made quite a few and I know Nick, you too. It's man. I think the hardest part, the hardest part is the concept. Yeah. If it's something new, if you have, if you have files or plans for something you've already made, it's like doing it, you know, just, just you go through the motions when you're doing it. Cause it's, you know, it's easy. You have it memorized, but if you're trying to make something completely new, it's, it's like to make what you fear competition or make what you Pretty fear much, challenge. Right. I mean, like that whole competition, from my understanding, is make something that you've always wanted to make, but just haven't had uh, the cojones to do. So, <laughs> and, and you know, for me, it's Nick, I think, nailed it. It's whenever I do something I have never done before, because it's doing it for a client the first time, it's hard to go in with full confidence because you've never done it. <laughs> what happens if you mess up on that project? Well, you're going to have to start over. But uh, no one wants to waste material. No one wants to have to start over. Dude, nobody wants to start over, especially if you're on a deadline. I've actually had to do that before. Like, I was talking to somebody about, like, when you make stuff. And you know mm -hmm. how sometimes, you know, behind the maker, you can go ahead and fix things that you mess up. Yeah, uh, there was one time there was no way I was coming back from it, and I had like two days left to like finish it. So this may be a little um, crazy of me, but anytime I can't come back from something and I know I can't, it goes. I, I destroy it, so I don't waste time on it. Because what happens is I'll sit there and be like, "Well, maybe I can do this," and then I'm screwing it up more, wasting more time when I could have already rebuilt a majority of it in the time that I wasted. Um, so generally I, I know it's a little crazy, but I tend to destroy things. I can't come back from, which has only happened once. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's happened more than once for me. I, I, I've definitely done projects where I've had to redo them just because some of them have been exactly that where it's a small thing. I try to fix it. I make it worse. And it, usually that small thing is so small. No one will notice, but I notice and I try to fix it. 
and they go down this path of slowly destroying this project because I'm trying to make it perfect. So yeah, it's happened a couple of times. Uh, def- I've definitely mentioned them on this podcast for sure. So you can listen back to some old episodes to figure those out. But I sold one of my mistakes, so I can't complain there. I, I marketed it as a beat up old flag coin rack and they bought it. <laughs> Hey, it's so, rustic, okay? And it came with a lot go. of features. It did there come with go. a lot of features. A lot of learning. I made it nice. <laughs> it's not like I just gave him a piece of junk, but like uh obviously I had more time to rework that different piece and I made it into something that, that someone's using right now for the challenge coins. So I, I can't complain. I bounced back pretty well from that particular piece. Well, gents, um Nick, you got any more going on in your shops? We kind of took over with some uh shop talk for you. I mean, look here. Uh, no, nah, that's pretty much it, man. I'm, I mean, I, I've been busy, but just busy, busy with what I just told you about. So um, I haven't really had a chance to post anything on Instagram, which is kind of unlike me, I guess. But, I, you know, sometimes it's just like you're exhausted. You just want to get stuff done and get, you know, especially if you're working two jobs, yeah, essentially. Absolutely. I was uh, telling a uh, nap because we talked earlier. I came home was it yesterday and I fell asleep on the couch. I don't fall asleep on the couch. Like <laughs> I, I, that's not me. I woke up to my wife slowly putting a blanket over me. I'm like, give me a soda. <laughs> I, can't, I need to, I need to keep that, going. That's the fix. <laughs> give me a soda. Well, give I mean, me like, it's one of those things where like, you know, you have too much to do to sit there and just let your body take over sometimes in that particular case i wasn't going to be going in the shop i wasn't going to be working with any tools i knew that because my schedule wasn't going to allow for it but like (laughs) as parents as business owners as someone that works full-time sometimes you just you go and go until you can't no more i gotta say man sometimes if i have if i have time I will put a project aside and I will go to bed thinking about it, about how I'm going to fix something or how I'm going to do something Mm -hmm. or a new approach. And it it usually benefits me to take a step back and think about it. So like I've been, I've been working without a joiner, obviously Mm -hmm. since I got rid of the old one and waiting on the new one to get the power supply. And I was like, man, how am I going to do this? I could, I'm building this. I could build a sled, but these, panels are going to be large so the sled well, is not going to do me any good on a table saw so i was like well i have that makita track saw so i did nice. it with the track saw um i don't know what's Did you going hate on. that thing i do hate it i absolutely well, hate so it. he actually came up for that super bowl uh, this past weekend and uh he brought some zebra wool with him he's like hey uh nat can I use your joiner? Yeah, like, yeah, dude. Like I, I join, I joined in the boards and I glued them up in his shop. Hey man, uh, I, can I, can I, can I use the joint? Can I use the joiner? Get some of the joiner. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, hey man. He's like, well, you're, you know, my shop's your shop, bro. I was like, cool. Give me the clamps. <laughs> Where's the glue? I mean, that's literally what it was. Like, because I've been over his shop and I've borrowed his clamps, took them home, and you know, and then gave them back, but. At the end of the day, you got a maker that, well, when I trust Nick, because, you know, I've been in his shop working. I know what he works with. He literally uses the same stuff I do. So I'm like, dude, just use what you need. Like, Oh, yeah. I got some new clamps, too, by the way. I got the Bessie, the Bessie, like, uh, trigger squeeze clamps, you know, the ones that, that you you just close your hand over and it's one-handed or whatever. Those things are amazing. One-handed. Well, I'm a one-handed There clamp, are new clamper. clamps from Rockler that are spring, like, There you closed. are, Nick. Uh, I don't know if you've seen these yet, but uh, <clears throat> they're coming from Rockler, and they're basically, uh, well, you clamp something, and it springs closed, and you just you know squeeze it a couple more times, and you're good to go. They're pretty sweet. I, I, don't, I can't tell you how many times I've been in, uh, you know, doing a project and like only had one hand, and you sit there, and you're like, you're pumping that to get it closer or pushing it with your shoulder or whatever. <laughs> And you need to hold it up to get the yeah. Like, yeah. And these things just like spring to the you know the thickness of whatever, and you do a couple more pumps, and it's clamped. It's kind what's of your, sweet. What's your favorite clamp that you have? Oh, I'd say I say most most, most used, used clamp. Yeah, because I I know right off the rip which clamps I yep. I use every day for every project. 
and uh, I would be I would lost do without my cabinet them. clamps. I mean, like I use yep. those probably the majority of all every loop I can. I don't have nearly enough, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, those are my go-to for any kind of glue ups. Absolutely every time. So yeah, the the twenty four inch ones are yep. are the best. I mean, if unless you're building a table, then the 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 forty eight inch ones are are yeah. money. But uh, and then Nap Nap uses the F style clamps, like the small ones, to mm-hmm. uh, like if you're bored, if you're like you know once you put clamp your boards together and like say the ends aren't lining up properly he'll just like bring them in and um i was doing it with pump clamps like the the Irwin ones you can't get no I'm gonna, pressure yeah so that's what i'm gonna start I, I went out and got last week i went out and got some of those uh the pony it seems like the there was ones. a talk here behind the scenes from the faces i'm getting from nap like well, no, I mean, it's good stuff, man. Like, you don't, like, you think, okay, this works, but then you, mm-hmm. like, see the little, little things. Like, those Absolutely. little baby Jorgensen's are, I live and die by those. Like, those, besides my cabinet clamps, some little ones are, they're awesome. Yeah, combination of them together is, is like, well, money helps in the bank. that out a lot nicer. I mean, like, there's a thousand different ways you can glue up a panel. Sorry, Nap, Nap was, uh, I don't know if you remember when he went out and got all those, uh, uh, pipe clamps, the ends, and he went and bought unthreaded pipes. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, so I went and got these things. I'm like, oh yeah, I could just put these on here, it clips on, and I'm like looking at this thing. I'm like, why is this threaded? There's no pressure. <laughs> it's not working. They're broken. <laughs> I literally looked at this thing. I was like, what am I doing wrong? And I'm like, oh my god. Like I had one of those like duh moments, and I was like, I need threaded pipes. So I took the on threaded ones back, traded them in, and got the threaded ones. And well, sure enough, hey, that was my problem. All right. So, real quick though, what do you think is, what do you like better as far as clamping power, um, the pipes or the cabinets? Ooh. Mm-hmm. The uh, pipes, I think I can get a lot more pressure on than the cabinets, but the cabinets, uh, I think, prevent me from over, over tightening. That right there. Have okay. you ever had yes. that problem? Where like what you squeezed all Come the glue on. out? You don't you don't remember the episode? Okay, this actually ties into what we were talking about earlier. Remember that project I said that I messed up and then had to redo and then sold later? Well, <clears throat> that's my first flag. <laughs> this is embarrassing. I had to go through this once already. <laughs> I overachieved when it comes to the pressure. I uh, I literally squeezed majority of the glue out to such a point that uh, the union fell out. <clears throat> Oh, wow. And uh, a house divided cannot stand, yeah, sir. I, uh, um, I... <laughs> it, it has, they have six hundred to a thousand pounds in clamping pressure. That doesn't mean you put a full six hundred to. I was like, pounds. I was sitting there and I was <laughs> torquing those babies down. Like I'm surprised the wood didn't snap, but like they, it was bad. And like AJ gave me crap for it for a long time, but um, yeah, you know, I learned a very valuable lesson. Like. I obviously all not all the glue squeezed out a little held together enough for me when I picked it up was fine. But when I put it down too hard, it kind of did its own thing. All right. All right. What kind of glue do you typically go to for a uh, panel Ooh, glue up? So if it's uh darker wood, I'll definitely use type bonds, uh, dark. Um, I, I, this might go to for the like walnut, even a little bit of cherry too. Okay. But <clears throat> it's, it's not type bond too though, right? It's just type yes. bond dark. Okay. Um, and? I use Type Bond 2 for pretty much everything else. Okay. Nap, what do you so, use? So I do have a weird – so he came and saw the shop. You know, he looked at – he was snoo- He's like, I'm just snooping now. Dude, he I was – He looked inside <laughs> was in this cabinet. cabinet. <laughs> he looked in this cabinet and he goes, dude, you got a lot of glue much? Like, holy crap. So I have a gallon of Type Bond 3 okay. Okay, that I refill my glue bot with. Yeah. frequently so obviously that says like hey type on three is my go-to for pretty much everything uh because it doesn't uh dry too yellow it doesn't dry too dark uh for pretty much every wood that you use between cherry oak and those things but i do use dark for walnut I only mm-hmm. use dark for walnut just because uh honestly like it it hides the little things if let's say your seam's not absolutely perfect which doesn't happen very often but when it does uh that glue dries dark enough that you can't even tell but then I also have type on quick and thick for things that I need to glue down fast. 
Like if I need to, if it has no structural integrity, um, then I just, I can use that, glue it up. And then it's good to go within like, you know, 20, 30 minutes. And I, and, I, and I'm okay to give it away that way. Um, and then if I'm gluing like plywood to things, I actually use the type on, what is it, like the super glue stuff? The, what, what is it called? Type on what? The uh, CA like, glue? Yeah, they're CA. I use the medium stuff um, just because if it's the thin, it's too runny. If it's too thick, I find that that stuff dries faster. So I use the medium and I'll, that way I can go ahead, stick, clamp it down for like, what, five minutes and it's set. And I'll actually hmm. be using some of that tonight. Uh, for one of the projects but yeah i mean it really all depends but my go-to is type on three because it's waterproof um not resistant like two is and yeah i mean that's really the only main reason why i use three is that for some reason i think three dries a little darker than two and like it the does some the products i'm doing shouldn't have to be dealing with any type of water you know what i'm saying i also bought a lot of it so yeah, you kind of got to use it. Yeah, when you have a gallon of it, you're just like, well, I have a gallon. I sure guess that's enough. what I'm using. Yeah, the green one. That's the green one, right? Yeah, I use the green. I use the three uh, primarily, and I keep it stocked. And like, I have two gallons in my garage right now. But what I found out the hard way in New Jersey is, if you keep gallons of glue in your garage over the winter, guess what happens? It freezes. Go bad. It'll separate and go bad, so yep. you kind of have to be careful. So what I ended up doing was sticking it in the pantry, and my wife was super mad. <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't I, food! I, I buy the the little uh, – I forget how many ounces it is, but, you know, it's the little two ones. And they, they last me pretty pretty good. I don't want to – I already took over the entire garage. I can only imagine if I start putting glue in my pantry, <laughs> I would not be here the next podcast. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's a gallon. You know what I mean? It's it's your reserve, so you'll save money eventually if you buy the gallons. You're, you're absolutely right. But uh, uh, the question I was trying to ask is: Do you guys use uh, Starbond? I use I use the CA. So CA glue is uh, it's good stuff. The Starbond is good stuff when you have the activator. Uh, if you don't have the activator, it takes a minute, obviously, right? Because activator is there to make it go, you know, dry fast. But I'll use that for when I'm like, example, if I'm doing a black epoxy job, I'll use it to mm-hmm. fill tiny bubble holes or things like that. So um, you don't use the clear, clear. Uh, I, I use the clear. Oh, you do. I'll okay. use the clear for when I'm doing, and this is, I so I don't have a planer sled. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably should make one, but I just haven't. But what I'll do is, you know, like when you're doing an uneven board and it rocks mm-hmm. side to side, I'll actually get a shim of wood from like wh- whatever's on the ground. Cause I, you know, when I use a table saw, I throw the little shims on the ground. And I'll shim it until it doesn't rock anymore. I'll actually cut it and CA glue that to the corner of the board and run it through my planer. And then it gets it even. The reason I ask is because I've used both. And I, I really am partial to uh, the Starbond brand. Um, I always use the accelerator. So I really don't have any issues with that. But I use. Aren't you all sponsored them. by Starbond? No, they've given me stuff. I have their flag, but I have no promo code or I am not associated in such a fact they pay me or anything. But. Um, it definitely has helped to give me some product here and there. But honestly, I've used different types of uh, CA glue. And honestly, it's just for me, it's the best fit. Like I, I turned my wife on to it for the Glowforge projects that she does inside. You know, <laughs> the nozzles, they give you the little uh, like hairpin nozzles you can put on. Mm-hmm. And like it just works really well. And the stuff they give you, they give you extra uh, heads for the glue. So when they, you know inevitably get all junked up you can just switch it out um i don't know it's just one that tied in with you know the dark you know the quick and thick and two those are kind of like all my go-to like i i I always keep a stock of those in fact i have like four quick and thick bottles sitting up there because i'll get frustrated with one because i can't get the glue out just right (laughs) and i'll grab another one (laughs) yeah that's i i have to say that the delivery system they have for quick and thick, it could be it's better. Frustrating. Oh my god. Frustrating. And the cap. It's so the cap. Why would spray- you put a little cap in it? Dude, the cap is so easily lost. I spray painted them red and still lost them. Yeah. Yep. Wow. I here here's uh, here's a tip for you. You if you have an old glue bottle, you could take the top off and put it on the quick and thick and it operates just like a normal glue bottle. And you can mm. get rid of that that little nozzle dealio. Yeah, I think that 
I don't know. It's I like quick and thick for some things, but it's definitely a deterrent. You're like, you're like trying to glue something up and you go to grab your quick and thick bottle and you're like, son of a gun. <laughs> now I got to dig, I got to dig out the glue from the last time. They need but, to make uh, a, a gallon of it so you can put it in a glue bot. See, quick and thick in a glue bot would be legit. Um, it's thick. Do you have a glue bot? I do not. I heard good things about them. Though. You need to get one. It's Dude, awesome. it's like eight bucks, bro. Do it. It's worth just, it. Just <laughs> just bite the bullet and do it. And <laughs> and you don't have to go back to your bottle and worry about the the. As long as you save the cap for it, the the silicone cap for the glue bot. That's you attached. Don't have, yeah, it's attached to it. So and it, it dangles. Um, oh, a dangling cap. Yeah. So it's for retention purposes, but. Uh, You'll never have to worry about um, digging out your nozzle. Let's oh, put it that that's way. the worst, especially with all that old glue build up. Or on they it. they take that long Q-tip and jam it down the end. Wait oh a minute, my are we, what are we talking about? <laughs> oh, Sidebar. God. Anyways, um, we had some questions, didn't we? <laughs> yes, yes, we did. Yes. Uh, let's see. What we'll, we'll start with? Uh, you want? You know, start with uh, Blackthorn Concepts if we want. You want me to go and start with Yeah, those? go ahead. All right, so Blackthorn Concepts here. He asks, first question, what's your favorite podcast? I would like to take that if you don't mind. Go ahead, Nick. So um, I I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to three particular podcasts in the garage. But my favorite uh, would have to be uh, Working Hands Podcast. I'm going to tell you right now. Um, it's definitely uh, interesting. So check them out if you haven't well, just already. Just go ahead and take our answers, man. Like, that yeah, just, like, what, oh. what are you doing? <laughs> no, but no, that's good. Um, so yeah, we, obviously working hands. Uh, there's one that I listen to frequently. It might be maybe not our own, you know, just the Sada's Issue podcast. I do uh, listen to ours, though. I do, too. Oh, absolutely. Once. I listen to each one once. And then I, I don't listen to them again. <laughs> we don't want like to hear our own voices. Yeah, I, I have to listen to this during the recording, which is pretty bad. And then <laughs> I got to listen to the uncut version, making it to the cut version, which is even worse. And then uh, I listen to it all finished up because, you know, it just, you got to admire your work to make sure you didn't really mess something up. <laughs> Leave one of Nick's jokes in there that some poor kid's going to repeat it. It ends tomorrow. up getting <laughs> us on the censored list. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah. But so I guess I end up listening three times if that uh, makes sense. But. Yeah, there's a couple. You know, I I don't ca- I'm not caught up on a lot of the podcasts I used to listen to just because life. But um, you know, Working Hands they've I, they just started their podcast not too long ago and they're doing fairly well, um, getting some great content out there. Um, I've listened to another Woodshop podcast a couple times here and there. Um, but they're great guys. I, I talked to them here and there. And there's another one I listened to. I haven't listened to in a minute just because of time, but. I'll, well, I'll, I'll post it on a story some other time. I can't think of it right now, but yeah, those are the podcasts I listen to. I actually have another one uh, that y'all haven't mentioned. Uh, it was actually brought up to me by uh, Jesse over building Jesse. Uh, she's mm-hmm. like, Hey, I know you guys get your podcast uh, and you guys have great content, but there's also these guys that I know that just started theirs as well. Uh, it's called splinters and stuff podcast. Uh, and it's like an hour and a half, like a little podcast when they first got started. Uh, they were just kind of like in their very first, like I would say inception episodes, they were kind of talking about like what they're going to be talking, you know, what their podcast is about. They got the business side of the house. They got, um, regular hand tool side of the house. They got all sorts of cool stuff to talk about. So they also deliver some pretty good content. So if you get done listening to our episodes, obviously, you know, we're primary because we're your favorite podcast out there. But uh, <laughs> but no, hey, you got all these other places too that have really good content, and uh, these are just only a few. I'm sure out of many that are out there that we just haven't heard of yet. But yeah, yeah, and that's that's a good. You know, it's always good to get multiple points of views, and that's one of the reasons we do community or competition, and we we yell that every episode. It's because it's not about one maker it's not about two makers not one about one podcast it's about supporting the community so if that's another podcast if that's another maker we're all about it so do us a favor try to listen to some of those we mentioned today you know tell them what you think we all can use feedback that's all the only way we're going to get better by the way my 
not that it matters, but my wife only listens to like true crime, true crime podcasts. And I Doesn't seriously think, you? I th- yeah, I seriously think it's to get ideas. <laughs> well, well, we'll know if Nick doesn't show up. We'll know why. <laughs> Did you see a, a dirty shovel in the background by the maker community flag? <laughs> now, there are two other questions. So, good question. Thank you for the question. I'm glad because we got to mention some other great podcasts out there, including your own. Um, but also... We have another question from you uh, there, Blackthorn Concepts, that are, what are you making for the hashtag make what you fear? Now, mind you, there's this question from you, but also Crafted and NJ also asked a very similar question as far as the make what you fear. Um, so what do you guys got for that? I know we talked a little bit about it. You know, it kind of was leading into it. We went away. Now we're back. Uh, you mean what do teasing you guys got it? For this? Just a tip and then. Yeah. So what you guys got? Okay. So personally, um, I'm not actually making anything for it. Uh, just because of timing, uh, right now, my, my February went from like a slow pace of like, I got constant things going to holy crap. I'm going to workbench con, um, at the end of February. So there's that. Um, are you a little apprehensive about that? I am not, I'm, I'm really excited, but I'm a little bit nervous too. Okay. So like it's, I'm going to meet a whole <laughs> Nicholas, That's... aren't you a little apprehensive about that? Like, no, I'm not. But I'm a little nervous. It, it, it teeter totters. Okay, there's times where I'm like, oh, let's go, and there's and then there's times like, oh no. <laughs> there's the PG version. <laughs> there you go. But no, it's it's a great opportunity to meet a whole bunch of makers, talk shop, and just get out there. But I mean, like, there again goes. There's some of those makers where I listened to before I got into woodworking to get into woodworking, and like those inspired me to get into the shop and make things by showing me techniques and things that they're doing with tools and stuff that I had access to. Um, so it's going to be great. Like I, I can't wait to go down there. I'm going down there with Daniel from PWNCNC. We're going to, you know, talk to people about the stuff he does and stuff that the uh, podcast does. Hopefully get out there, spread the word for uh, both of us. And uh, yeah, it, it's a great opportunity to just, get out there and talk to some makers, see what's going on, you know, feel the, uh, the pulse of the community and see what's happening. So yeah, I'm I pretty just, excited about it. I just want to let you know that, uh, apprehensive, uh, it's an adjective and synonyms include <laughs> anxious, worried, <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the, uh, the old thesaurus Re- there. Restless. You know, he's stressed. looking that up and waiting for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, Nick, what about you, man? Yeah, I mean, make what I fear. I uh, I make whatever people pay me to make that I can accommodate in my shop. And I what, own burgundy. What 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 wouldn't I? <laughs> I mean, I I I really, you know, when I first started building stuff, I was a little more worried about it, but now. I think I'm kind of like at the point where it's like, I, if I don't know how to build it, I'll go on YouTube, you Figure know, but I'm not going to make, start making cuts and YOLO and yeet the project. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I'm just going to do it, do it and okay. cut twice. Go, go, what is it? Measure once Here's and cut twice. Here's a new question for you then. What's one project that you got and you're like, oh no, I, I have no idea how to go about doing this. Well, I have, I have this podium I'm going to build. That uh, <laughs> but I mean, I'm not worried about jacking it up. I'm I'm more worried about um making it to the specs I need to make it to, and making it. So it's every now and then you come up with like everything goes together in your head the way it's mm-hmm. supposed to, but then you know when the metal meets the meat, things don't always go your way. I, I I'm not I don't know. If you said if you gave me the materials today and you cleared my workload and you were like here today or this week this is your job to just make this this week I would I would be like let's do it you know let's let's go and get the, some plans and we'll do it but other than that I mean these guys aren't expecting it till summertime so I'm not too worried about you know I got time to do my research and all that Fair stuff enough. what about you now so- so for all of us, we were not making anything specifically for Make What You Fear. Uh, one, because of bandwidth, and yes, because of workload. It's really hard to just kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go and just make something that I fear. Uh, but I got to say, like, and to Josh's question, too, to go and tie in with it, 
Shadow boxes was one thing I feared. Well, I kind of conquered that fear already. Now at this point, now if I'm to say things that uh, I fear making now that I will eventually get to, uh, I would say more multimedia like metalwork type stuff with mm. my woodworking. Uh, however, uh, due to me moving like in the next three months, still don't know where I'm going. For those of you that aren't in the military that listen, and those of you are in the military. Um, you can level or not level with me here. But when you got to move and you don't know where you're going, uh, it's kind of a pain in the rear. And right now, I'm not really looking to do anything new at the moment uh, just because of that, but also because I have jobs on the, the old list. But if I'm to say besides that, big furniture. Because just as Nick said, you can sit there and have it planned out in your mind and you're ready to rock and roll. But as soon as you start making cuts and you start putting stuff together, you're like, Oh crap! I forgot to, you know, put an excess of three quarters for this notch that I got a mortise in, or this, that, and the other. And you're just like mother. But then, honestly, you think about it in the end. You're like, oh, I can use this for this piece later. But in yeah. the moment when you're making these things, you're just like, yeah, I screwed up. I'm losing my mind. Which Josh, I've called you a couple times with like almost mental breakdowns as far as projects are concerned. Uh, putting myself out there a little bit. The one chest I made. I literally screwed up royally and we let, I literally went there for like a good 30 minutes of what am I going to do? Um, yep. So yeah, there's been those times, but yeah, I think if I fear anything, it's multimedia with metal and uh, big furniture right now. We're, multimedia we're talking- with metal. Really? <clears throat> well, I'm not talking like sheet cheated goods. I'm talking like, you know, doing rebar stuff. I'm talking um, milled out aluminum because let's be real. I don't know if any of you've done aluminum before. I've done sheeted aluminum, and that was sketchy at best. I I, guess, I would so like that's why I would just outsource that part. You know what I mean? But why outsource if I can learn how to do it? Yeah, well, but do you whole... have the equipment to do it? That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you don't have the like, I don't have a uh, you know a plasma cutter CNC. You know what I mean? So if I needed something for a sign or whatever that, that the customer wanted exactly, I would find somebody who knows how to do that through our network. You know what I mean? And then I would outsource that portion to them. Granted, my bottom line is going to be affected by that, but I don't care at that point. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's going to have both our if names. If it's on something it. I can't do, I'll do that. But I do have like specific bits for cutting aluminum. When I first started, right. When I first got into flags and stuff, I was doing metal accents uh, but cutting those metal accents again was out was sketchy at best. So, uh, but yes, I will outsource, I think, in the future for that kind of stuff. But if I'm talking blocks of aluminum, I'm going to learn to mill that stuff because I can do it on my CNC. So that, that's the whole challenge, though, is to do uh, make what you fear is taking a media that you're not used to working with and creating something with it because you're you're stepping out of your comfort zone. So I think we do that almost constantly nick you're stepping into different materials so it seems like every week or a different tool that can <laughs> raise you know your game over there nap is always doing something different with a laser and just stepping out of his comfort zone with epoxy and different stuff like that and myself you know i'm doing stuff with um acrylic sheets i'm actually going to be doing a project shortly I just got all the stuff in did uh, you order that well. stuff by the I way i did i was sitting right next to me right now how many did you order? Um, I forget what the actual order was and how much it cost, but it's three. Oh no, no, of- I'm not talking about the the SLE paper. I'm talking about the the oh, no, uh, no, no. brushed aluminum. I haven't, done, I haven't done that yet. Uh, I plan on doing it. I had to get the stuff for the project in first, and then I was going to go ahead and do the stuff for the you know the testing, the fun so, stuff. Yeah, I mean, make what you fear. I think we're doing it. I think we're we're constantly pushing the envelope when it comes to our products because we want to get better. Um, it's not a comfort zone at all. I mean, Nick, I know you've been wasting material trying to figure some of this stuff out. I know yeah, I, I have. I, I, yeah, of course. But I'm not worried about that. You know what I mean? That's yeah, I know it's I know it's all part the of the plan. Yeah, it's controlled chaos. <laughs> I see what you did. <laughs> but at the same time, though, when I when I do figure it out. I mean the the cape of like I don't know I I just think it's like I don't I I wouldn't put fearing like fear as a as a Might not describe it. Yeah, yeah it's not it's not a, a proper way to describe it it's more of like a um I don't know like venturing into the unknown but I'm not I'm not worried about it because I already typically know 
what the end result is going to look like because I've seen something made with that particular medium. You know what I mean? So I have an idea of where I need to be. It's just me taking that step to get there and and then just walking it in. You know what I mean? Research and development, baby. R and D or T and A, whichever. Grow. You know what I'm saying? You, if you did the same thing over and over, you might continue <laughs> a business, but you're never going to grow until you start yeah. stretching and you know venturing. You got to be. Things that- you got to be agile and you got to be innovative. All right, and you got to include a whole bunch of different aspects to your. I, I see what you did there, and I, I'm going to beat you at work tomorrow. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> I, I'm oh, guessing crap. that's one of your speeches from your classes. No, no. it's one of the it's something from something we teach. But anyways, hey, so we got one more question though. I know we beat this one kind of we, we went into a lot. Do we have one more question or do you want to just save that? It's about the bandsaw stuff. Uh let's let's save it. We're sitting at uh over an hour right now. Let's go ahead and start wrapping it up, Nick. We like to wrap up with our sponsors. So we want to give a huge shout out and thank you to you, our Patreons. Thank you so much. I think I stole Josh's line, but thank you so much for your continued support. Remember, folks, all of your patronage funds that you give to us goes back to you. So um, with that, be, uh, be uh, I guess, be alert for more prize information that comes out approaching our hundredth episode. I'm going to let Josh tackle that. I think Josh wanted to hit that, but I'm, I'm venturing outside my sponsor list. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we, we also want to thank PWNCNC. Daniel over there. Uh, great guy. Check out his stuff. He's got some premium grade a stuff. So PWNCNC.com. If you want that 5% off promo code to include the spindle kit, use uh, promo code Sawdust Nation 981. And thank you to Total Boat for your continued support. If you want a 10% off promo code for, mm-hmm. that's right. If you want a 10% off promo code for Total Boat, go ahead and hit us up in the DMs and we will get you that code. And now I'm going to kick it on over to Josh or Nap. Who am I going to? Nap. It's to, it's to me for the old Apple podcast. Apple uh, you, Podcast. Apple. Uh, if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any of those podcast catchers that are associated with any kind of apps, you will find us at the Sawdust Nation Podcast. Uh, please give us five stars uh, because if you don't give us five stars, we need to know why. And if we don't know why, we can't fix or give you the content that you deserve. Uh, yeah, that's really kind of it. I mean, just give us five stars or else Walnut's going to get you. Walnut hasn't made an appearance lately, but she's been – after hours getting after people so please leave she's sleeping stars. right now so she can come get those that don't but with that you can get a hold of any one of us on the podcast page on instagram at sawdust nation podcast you never know who you're going to reach so uh strap in it might be fun it might not be who knows <laughs> easy nap easy this is bg remember and then we'll just go right into nap you can reach him at naps nutty works llc he'll answer any kind of questions you might have and if you don't, he'll uh, point you in the right direction. Then you got Nick from MPG Creations with that nice mustache and smile. He'll help you out where he can. Just make sure uh, you have some kind of web security before clicking any links. Just uh, throwing that out there. <laughs> and then myself, <laughs> Josh from North Country Woodworking. I'll try to give you an answer. And if I can't, I'm going to point you in the right direction as well. Because uh, that's the only thing we can do. We're not going to just BS you. You can reach us on our Gmail account at SawdustNationPodcast at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, send us topic ideas or what you think of the podcast, what you're currently working on. Or, you know, inquire about what's going on with the giveaway we're going to do in the 100th episode. Okay, final words. Yeah, folks. So we talk about quite a bit of stuff here on the Sawdust Nation Podcast from work, uh, the workshops to what we going on, got going on in real life, you know, outside of the shop, what we got going on actual work business stuff, all sorts of things. We don't know everything, folks, but we give you what what we can. And uh, if you ever got stuff for us, please reach out to us. But if we've got answers to your questions, we'll always do that, just like we should as a community that we are, uh, because it is, after all, community over competition. Uh, We won't steer you wrong if we ain't got the answer. We'll find someone that has that answer. Um, But hey, so just to 
pose a question out there if you are listening and maybe send us into the podcast and you know we'll feature it maybe on this next episode. What do you all got going on in your shops? Uh, let us know uh, because you know we'll feature it. Talk about what you got going on. And if you send us maybe a video clip, maybe we'll just go ahead and air that up and you know see see what you got going on. Other than that, Nick, what you got, man? Well, like always, take care of yourselves and each other. And uh, you know, I'm totally stuck on this podcast, uh, even though we're talking about glue today. Um, I love the Sawdust Nation podcast. I hope you guys do too. So, till next time, stay classy. As always, Josh. thank you for tuning in to the 86th episode. Um, we're climbing right up there. The hundredth is getting closer and closer. Fourteen more. Yeah, like you said, fourteen more. Um, hopefully, you're tuning in on your way to work in the morning when you wake up. Set us as your alarm. You can do that. You know, you can set Sawdust Nation podcast and wake up to our lovely voices every morning. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, go ahead and listen to us in the shop. You know, anywhere you can. You know, tell you know fellow word workers about uh, the podcast, the ones that you think might enjoy it. You know, it, the whole thing is community. So let's be part of your community and share. Uh, you know what we're doing here with everyone you can. And with that, hopefully you went into your shop to make some sawdust this week, or you're going to. And uh, we're going to wrap it up with our normal sawdust nation. Sawdust podcast. nation out. out? Sa- sawdust nation out. Out? No, you gotta, you gotta do Sawdust Nation. Ow! Oh. But, uh, you know, I, I I accused my wife of uh, putting glue on all my pistols. Uh, she denies it, but I'm sticking to my guns. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good ending with the PG version. Cut! Right.